Hello and welcome to this week's edition of the program Seat of Power, a program that keeps you abreast of the activities of Governor Nasuru Erufai and those of other members of the executive arm aimed at improving the socio-economic development of the state. In this edition, we shall be looking at the swearing-in of local government council elected chairman, Kaduna State. We shall also bring to you the swearing in of the state grand caddy, commissioner, planning and budget commission, and other senior government officials. That I will preserve, protect, and defend the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So help me God. Do so long, please swear. Please stay with us. Welcome back. Kaduna State Government has swung in 21 out of 23 local government elected chairmen to run the affairs of their respective local government in the next three years. Thousands of people converge on Motrila Square, Kaduna, to witness the swearing in the newly elected chairman in the state. Swearing in the elected chairman, Governor Nasuru Erufai urge them to ensure they carry everyone along, irrespective of party affiliation and ethnic background. I am pleased to welcome you all to this significant event in the governance of our state. I'm especially delighted to preside for a second time as elected local government chairman take their oaths of office. On the 26th of June, 2018, we swore in the first set of elected local government chairmen who had emerged following the first ever electronic vote in Nigeria. Due to various reasons, we could not hold local government elections before their three-year tenure ended in June this year. Our new chairmen are the products of the second election conducted using electronic voting. On behalf of the state government, I congratulate the new chairman and wish them every success in the service of our people. From whatever party you have emerged, you are today assuming a sacred mandate to do right by all your people in accordance with the laws of the land and the oaths you have just taken. Please let service to our people be your priority. The people of Kaduna State have elected you as the chairman to lead them at the local level. And they have chosen you in elections conducted using electronic voting. This state government took the conscious decision to adopt this innovation to promote electoral integrity. The task of the elected persons is now to show themselves worthy of this mandate. And I wish each and every, you, every one of you well in creditably discharging this burden of leadership. Let me end this by going back to my first appeal to the chairman assembled here today. It is God that entrusts power to whom he chooses. God has chosen you to be the leader of all citizens in your local government areas. 
without regard to their political, ethnic, or religious persuasion. You are from today custodians of a sacred trust. You must therefore be fair, just, and reasonable in all your dealings, decisions, and interactions with the people. You must not discriminate against those that did not vote for you. Neither should you favor those with whom you share the same ethnicity or religion as that will violate your oath of office. May God give us all the grace to do justice to all according to law. Once again, I wish you success in serving our people. Thank you for listening. God bless Kaduna State. God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Governor Erufai said since inception, the current administration in the state embarked on local government service reforms to make them strong and to meet the purpose of the creation as being the tatia of government. Since 2015, this government has spent considerable time and effort to reform the local government system so that it can deliver public service at the grassroots. When we came into office, we inherited a broken local government system that was doing little more than paying its own employees. At least eight of these local governments could not even pay their staff salaries without assistance from the state government. These troubled local governments have been sustained by a perverse and unfair system that took money from the solvent local governments to pay the staff of the, unfair, of the insolvent ones. Rather than inquire into the causes of the financial difficulties of the affected local governments and taking remedial steps to address them, the previous government chose to penalize those that were prudent and therefore without financial problems. The fact is that many of the local governments were not only overstaffed, but they lacked the right quality of personnel to enable them to deliver decent social services at the local level. They have been deformed into little more than patronage machines. This crisis of capacity reflected, for example, in the clamor by international donors that primary health care should be moved from the local governments to the state government control. We hope that in a few years we'll be able to restore primary health care back to the full and effective control of capable local governments as envisaged by the Constitution. We've taken careful steps to reform the local government system for improved performance and service delivery. This government has addressed the capacity deficit by directing the recruitment of qualified professionals, including lawyers, engineers, and architects, for the local government service. Clear establishments have been prescribed and implemented for each local government area to ensure that they have just the optimal number of personnel. With the kind support of the Kaduna State House of Assembly, we have enacted a new local government administration law. The law places governance at the local level on the presidential system model. While executive powers shall vest in the chairman, the elected councillors shall constitute the legislative arm. Specific roles are assigned to the vice chairman and supervisors of key departments. I urge the new chairman to study this law carefully, comply strictly with the establishment levels, and liaise with the local government service board for any issues around human resources or personnel management. The occasion has in attendance of the State Deputy Governor, Dr. Adiza Sabwa Balarabi, Speaker, State House of Assembly, State and Local Government Party officials, other senior government officials, as well as members and party supporters. During the period in focus, the state governor Nasuru Ahmed Erufai has similarly sworn in acting Grand Kadi, Commissioner of Planning and Budget, Permanent Commissioners, Chairman Judicial Service Commission, members of Legislative Service, 
and Physical Responsibility Commissions. Speaking at the swearing-in of the Grand Caddy and other new governor appointees, Governor Nasuru Erufai described their appointment as a call to service considering the animal's responsibilities of the offices. From today, we swore in two new justices of our High Court. At that swearing in, the late Grand Kadi was here. We extend pleasantries. And now we are here to swear an acting Grand Kadi because he died. I wish to congratulate all those that have been sworn in today in various roles as our commissioners in our executive bodies, as well as chief executive of one of our agencies. I should welcome you to join the government at its last lap. I want to remind those of you that are commissioners that you have a five-year term. So you're going to be here till 2026, well into the time of the next administration. But I am confident, just as we inherited commissioners from the previous administration and found many of them worthy to continue to serve us, you will be found worthy by the next administration. We want to thank you for all the work that you have done and the work that you will do in furthering the interest, progress, and development of Kaduna State. After congratulations, I wish to commiserate with you because you have a lot of responsibility with very little thanks. You will be working 24 hours a day, seven days a week, at least for the next 18 months while we are here. We are slave drivers. We work everyone to the bone. So I commiserate with you in that regard, and I appeal to your friends and family to understand that your responsibility does not come with money or contracts, but lots of work, more work, and more work. So we appeal to friends and family to stand by you, encourage you to do this job to the best of your ability. Because overall, when we all do our best, Kaduna State will get better and then it will benefit everyone. The governor called on them to discharge their responsibilities effectively in line with the governor's agenda of the state government. In an interview shortly after the swearing in, the acting Grand Kadi Abrahman Abubakar Umar and Commissioner of Planning and Budget Commission Al Haji Muhammad San Abdullahi fledged to continue to work for the progress of the state. We are expected to bring in some, to inject some energy so that uh, there shall be improvement in the system. There shall be improvement and continuity in the system. It's not that nothing has happened. The more you discharge cases, the more they come in. It depends on the arrangement in the society. It is not only persons in, in government that only do the job in sustaining stability in society. Parents, the community, the leadership everywhere is a collaborative effort. Spe special cases only go to court. But it is our hope that parents will do their best to handle issues of soul even before coming to court. Well, it's just a call to service. It's not a ceremonial issue. It's a solemn, solemn occasion. Look at the weighty wordings of the of the oath of office. Any judicial officer is not appointed to service cronies, friends. It's not an office that gives you gives friends and relations money. It's a big expectation. God is expecting us to, to deliver. We will do, do our best. Well, uh, it's a pleasure uh, because when we set out um, on this journey in 2015, it was with the aim to serve the people of Kaduna State. And I think that what we are trying to do is, is that uh, in any position we find ourselves, we will try to do our best uh, to continue to do that service. Uh, Alhamdulillah, you know, as you said, we've had a, I've had a very versatile career, uh, firstly in planning and budget, back to government house and now back to there. And I think that the one uh, constant theme will be, that will be there 
will be what can we do to improve the lives of the people of Kaduna State. And that is what will continue to drive us, inshallah. I am very appreciative of uh, the people of Kaduna State. I, I thank them very, very much for all the love and support that they've shown, not only me, but also the government of uh, uh, Mala Nasu Arufai. And I want to just uh, reaffirm to everybody that I will continue to work day and night, uh, uh, morning, noon and night, and weekends and everything to ensure that I discharge my responsibilities to the governor and to the people of Kaduna State. Uh, that is what drives me. Uh, whatever I can do to bring development to my state uh, is the most important thing for me. So I'll continue to do that, inshallah. <music>
Dr. Hadiza Balarabe said, apart from appointing women into sensitive positions in administering the state, the state government also introduced various programs aimed at empowering them. Whoever it is that's, that's here, and even those that are outside of here, if you need any support, I think the women, you know, will rally around and help make that happen. So please don't, don't, don't hesitate to, to get in touch. If, if uh, Commissioner here is supporting the Commissioner, it's by extension she's, she's providing her support to you. So I think uh, it's time for us to actually realize that as women we need to pull our strength together if we want to make things happen. We would uh, continue to help one another. We'll continue to hold hands for those that are coming behind us. Um, I'm sure that this country, I believe, I have a strong belief that we will do great. We'll do greater things. We'll see very great things for, for Nigeria. So thank you very much. Uh, this is a cut was it with a political twist. So we're not going to go we're not going to go into the nitty gritty of what we're doing in Kaduna State for you know in helping women. But I'm very sure that the Kaduna State uh, president will get in touch with the ministry so that we know which programs are available. The Ministry of Education also has some programs, housing, has some social housing, that you can, all, you can all cash in. So please don't hesitate to get in touch. If you can't go directly to each one of them, you can do it through Haji Hausa. She's, she's, uh, she's something else. In an interview shortly after the visit, the leader of the delegation and National Vice President Council of Women's Societies, Haja Lami Adamlaw, explained the essence of their visitation. Well, we are here to pay a courtesy call to Her Excellency, the Deputy Governor of Kaduna State, to solicit for her support and prayers as a mother of the land because uh, we are vying we will soon change the battle of leadership at the national level, so we are here to solicit for her support and the votes of Kaduna State women. Uh, we'll be contributing and we'll continue. We've been given our, you know, National Council of Women's Societies in Nigeria is a voice, is a voice for the voiceless. So we'll be helping our women, especially on programs that affect women. You know, we always carry the government programs to our women, especially at the grassroots, so that they will know what is happening and how they will come in to get the government uh, support. To call on our women because 2013 is by the corner, 2023 is by the corner. We have to support each other and it's time for registration of membership. They should come out because we cannot do anything without the membership. So let us come out now and uh, register, and those that have registered, let's mobilize ourselves, because nobody will do it for us. We're not going to take it free. So we have to stand up on our feet, and then get what we want. We're not looking for anything free, but we'll fight for it and we'll get it. Also, the state chairman of the association, Barista Zainab Hassan, speaks on the contribution of the association in rendering assistance to women in the state. Our visitation to the government has to do is to pay the deputy governor, Dr. Adisa Sakai, a courtesy visit because she was in our inauguration in July 15th and since then we've now met. And we deemed it fit that we see her to appreciate her coming to our inauguration and to say thank you. And we did that today and we're happy. The NCWS is concerned about the welfare of the women of Kaduna State, indigent children in the society, children that are dropped off of school, women that don't have business of their own, want them to be self-reliant, and so many, I can go on and on. With this, we come to the end of the program Seat of Power. Join us next week for a fresh edition of the program. I am Nurebele Idris, same bye for now. <laughs>